Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to another Man 25 online game. Today we have the Chicago Bears and the Green Bay Packers. The week 9 Monday night matchup between these two old time rivals since the 1920s. These two teams have been going at it longer than anybody else, any of us watching this video have been alive for. But um, we get to watch Luke McCown tonight. Not even color, it's McCown. And with McCown in the game, we're going to try to, you know, ground and pound the ball Forte as much as we can. Because Forte is still a beast and so far the game plan is working out to perfection for in the open field and he's going in the end zone here at Lambo. he won't be doing a Lambo leap he could just spike the ball that's all good and we grabbed seven points there early in our opening possession only took it took us like less than two minutes so that was like perfect and here he's on offense of course the Packers their receiving core has been pretty depleted this year um Cobb is out for a bunch of weeks James Jones is playing in um this game but I think he's missed like two weeks um Jermichael Finley's struggling with injuries though the one um, reliable guy for Rodgers has been Jordy Nelson as you see him throw the ball out there on third down or second down that brings up third down and he throws in the backfield for Lacey but Lacey can't get the first down that brings up fourth down and two and he's going for it and he's checking it down to Jordy Nelson who's able to get the first down there it looked like we we actually did have him stop there in the backfield but Jordy Nelson was just able to fall forward and that's just something that Jordy Nelson can do is Eddie Lacey puts a nice spin move on there that a lot of other receivers pretty much all, most other receivers can't do he, um that was major right too major right's a hard hitting safety and Jordy Nelson still fell forward I was looking for that damn drag too but instead this drive ends up um coming up to seven actually six points here because when he tries to go for the two point conversion with Stark he gets blasted twice and cannot get in so got the touchdown but did not get the two points he didn't take his PAT so he's down by one right now and he saw Eddie Lacy falling forward stuff like that Eddie Lacy's been the one bright spot for the Packers offense this year with all the um troubles they've had or, or injuries as you see me almost throwing an interception there thankfully it was behind the guy's back and then third down 13 we're able to get the first down nice pass there from the counter forte but yeah Lacy's been you know, one of the best breakout rookies this year is helping the Packers get a more balanced game. He's getting a lot of tough yards, as you see. Speaking of tough yards, Brandon Marshall getting some tough yards there. And then the next play, Matt Forte catches the edge. Someone gets pancaked. Brandon Marshall doesn't pick up the block in the last guy, but it doesn't really matter because Forte already has two rushing touchdowns in this game. And Forte, it's not really Forte. It's more of um, the uh, blocking than anything else. Forte is just falling through the blocks in wide open lanes and then doing the rest. And here, you see he's just throwing the ball on the run here. It looked like he was running like verticals across the field. Ended up finding a guy open anyways. And we want to eventually get a stop. And there, he tried to throw the screen, but it probably wasn't going to get much. I was going to try to make a dive tackle there. Probably would have brought him back in the backfield. Instead, now third down and six after we make the tackle. And he runs the ball here and does not get it. Fourth down comes up and he goes for it again. And he's throwing it to... John Bostic. He was looking for Jordy Nelson once again, but he found the rookie Bostic instead who gets the interception, which we didn't need on fourth down. He dropped it. I wouldn't really care, but we'll take it anyways. We'll get the ball on downs and Ooh, Forte flipping over there. You see Forte's stats. He's already having a beastly game. This time we come out passing. Just to try to mix it up. I didn't really find anything I liked, so I checked it down. So second down, we come back to the run game. Get a good game there with Forte, and there's an injury, and thankfully it's not Forte. So third down and two, with all the running, the play action becomes your best friend because he's looking for the run. He sends a bunch of pressure there, and um, Martellus Bennett ends up wide open. Now I'm here first down. Once again, I try to come out passing. It doesn't work, so I go back to the run game on second down. Same thing that happened last year but this time we get nothing out of it and now it's third down and long here and once again we're looking at Forte cannot find him and we try to throw it to Bennett there but that's just the power of Luke McCown in the game we overthrow the ball there and we have to punt the ball but look at my beastly punt at the one yard line here and then he tries to run the screen pass but we come flying in there with Conte and we force a safety. Eddie Lacy goes down in the backfield. Now he had to punt the ball to Devin Hester. And look at Devin Hester in the open field. What a change of events. Hester, the 20, cut back, almost to the 10, but still an electric return by Devin Hester. And then we run the screen to Forte, and we are going into the end zone. Just like that, we score nine points. So. That overthrow by Luke McCown there to Bennett might have been a blessing in disguise because we just completely flipped this game around as I make a nice play in the screen. But Jordy Nelson continues to play like a beast. But yeah, we punt the ball at the one yard line. That was a great punt as we sniff out the screen that time. But um, we stopped the, we stopped the punt at the one. And then we got the screen pass there. I read it. I got the tackle. And then Devin Hester doing what Devin Hester does. And then we get the touchdown. So 
Now it's a 23-6 game when he could have potentially took in the lead on his drivers, I think. Might have been able to tie the game, I'm not sure. But he gets points here, which he badly needed after we completely flipped the game on him. And once again, he goes for two. And once again, he doesn't get it. This time, I just blow it up a major right. Put Lacey on his back there. And it's a 23-12 game. It could have been a 9-point game. Instead, it is an 11-point game because he decided to get cute and go for 2-point conversions. As you see, our passing game isn't really doing much. I'm first down trying to come out passing just to keep them off balance. But I got to go back to the run. And then third down, we come out passing because we... We need to and we find Alshon Jeffrey. Of course, Brandon Marshall and Alshon Jeffrey, they're one of the better one-two tandems at wide receiver in the league and probably two of the more reliable receivers since they're so big. You don't really, you know, think of them as dropping the ball a lot since they're so big. So, and they're big targets. So they're easy to find. So, you know, we're going to look for them and of course, continue to run, run the ball forte. And here, I'm trying to call a timeout, but all these stupid messages keep on coming up. So, I lost like four seconds there because I couldn't call the timeout. And here, I try to go out of bounds and thankfully we do. Stop the clock. Second down and six after the run. We throw it downfield to Jeffrey and Jeffrey hangs on after the big hit. And then we don't call a timeout. We continue to run call call play here and we get a touchdown next play to Brandon Marshall. I can hardly keep up. This whole hard up thing in this two minute drive. I can keep up. It was just perfection on the execution there and got in with 12 seconds left and that's what you want on a two minute drive you want to get the touchdown and leave as little time as possible for your opponent and that's what we did we gave him no time he couldn't do anything he takes a sack there to end the half trying to look for a Hail Mary there and he goes down by 18 points at half and that play there with the whole um Safety and all that, that is just defining this game right now here. He's just throwing four verts up here. Run and play action. It's fooled me a few times getting four verts. But now I'm expecting to play action. And now we go off sides. And now that we got like triple coverage on Randall Cobb, unfortunately it's going to be first down and five. And Randall Cobb still almost got that somehow. Like, what the hell? Yeah, I got like triple coverage on that man. Got somebody manned up and two zones. And here next play, we got somebody manned up on Cobb. And when he tries to go to Finley, he instead puts his hands in the cookie jar. And Conti makes him pay. And we get the interception and this dude is just falling apart on all different levels you got luke mccown out here and look at luke mccown here with the screen pass pressure in his face lobs it up to devin hester catches him in stride and hester makes a few people miss in the open field with his speed and he gets in the end zone that was one of the most beautiful passes i've thrown all year just you know pressure in your face what goddamn luke mccown is your quarterback that is just beautiful, man. Hit him in stride. Made two people miss. I don't think I've thrown passes like that with Tom Brady or like Peyton Manning in this game. I just threw that pass with Luke McCown, man. I don't think Jay Culler could have made that pass. And this dude's on the ropes. He tried to send a little friendly quit to me, which I obviously declined because why the hell would I take a friendly quit? But that was just because the concede defeat wasn't there. And you see him, he had a completion on third down, but he's on the ropes right now. He needs to score touchdowns. He needs to get onside. He needs me to make mistakes, but instead, he makes the mistake. And this is going to end up beating up being the fatal mistake for this guy's game because... Um, he's done. <laughs> he is rage quitting. He has too much. He had enough of me. Too much interceptions. Too much mistakes for him. And just too much good defense by us more than anything else. And that has been a big part of my game lately. The Sugar 3 defense has been coming through, man. And you guys are going to see my record here after, um, we see this guy. He quit. We get the win. I don't get IP booted just to, um, make sure I didn't get IP booted. Thankfully, I didn't. I get the win. And... Um, you see my record here. My record is actually really good. I'm actually in the top 1,000, which is something besides like when the release date version comes out or um the early version comes out, Man 25. I've never actually been in the top 1,000 in Man before, mainly because I never played that many games online before. Last year I was pretty close, but I just never played a lot since I played subscribers more. But this year I've been playing quite a few ranked games along with subscriber games, and now as you'll see, I am 894th after I played this game. So that's pretty good. So, um, yeah, I'm making moves, man. I'm making moves. So, hope you guys liked the video. Leave a like in the video if you liked it. Subscribe for more Man 25 online games. And I will catch you guys next time. And by the way, that picture you guys saw, that was my record from September, like, 14th or something like that. So, as you saw, um, not a great record there, but we really stepped it up after that. So, um, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time.